What is up, Nuggets? It's your boy, Killer Pizza here, with a brand new video for all you rascals and rap scallions. Now, I gotta level with you guys. I had big plans to give you guys this Blu-ray hunting video when I headed out to the mall, FYE, Second and Charles and all that. It was on my birthday, which was yesterday. And to be quite honest with you, I just had fun enjoying the time to myself. I didn't really want to pull my camera out or anything, but I do have some new pickups that I want to share with you guys for an update for my horror collection. And also, I must let it be known that I do have something in the works that will be coming early next week. Something I'll be filming this weekend, which should be pretty cool. Maybe you'll see some familiar faces in this one. But anyways, back to what we're here for. The horror. Now, the first film I picked up yesterday... April Fool's Day. Now this is one I used to watch once again when I was younger with my sister all the time. This is the original cover of the VHS if that looks a little more familiar to everybody. But this is one of those really obscure ones that I always loved that I've been trying to find but I believe it's out of print on Blu-ray and you can only find it on DVD and it's pretty expensive wherever I've looked. And I actually got pretty lucky and found this for $4.80 at uh, Second and Charles. I'm really excited to watch this one. I don't remember much from this, just vague memories. It's pretty much uh, some college kids, I think, go on this vacation to their rich classmates' like estate on some island. And when they get there, uh, this gruesome freak accident on, on the docks happens, which I do remember. That always stands out to me. Always freaked me out as a kid. But anyways, everybody starts falling off one by one. And this kind of turns into like a, a mystery uh, mystery horror film in a way because it's actually happening on April Fool's Day. So it's kind of like, is this all a joke? Or is this actually really happening? Either way, you know, these people, they're not trying to sit around and find out if it's fake or not. Anyways, this was really good. I hope it holds up still. I haven't seen it in so long. Very excited to check it out. Another one I found here, Seven Doors of Death, which I guess is, I don't know what version this is to be called this, because everywhere I look, it's actually called The Beyond. I never really heard of this movie before, but it's got Luce Fulci, which you guys know I've really been getting into his movies lately and a lot of Italian stuff. Uh, this is apparently the second movie in his Gates of Hell trilogy, which follows, uh, what, City of the Living Dead, and after that comes... I can't remember the name of it. The House by the Cemetery, I believe. But this cover alone, you know, this is the shit I'm looking for when I'm out trying to find some random shit. And it looks really gory, looks really crazy. Apparently, uh, the plot is something along the lines there's some wild murder that happens that kind of opens the seventh gate to hell back in the 20s, I think. And then 50 years later, there's a motel or hotel built on the same grounds. And this girl running it slowly finds out that she's actually running her hotel uh, on the seventh gate of hell. All this crazy shit starts happening. I watched a little bit of the trailer. I couldn't watch it all because it kind of gave too much away. But this movie looks pretty crazy. And like I mentioned before, a lot of times in these older films, the way the film is, it looks almost more eerie or creepy. Just, you know, I don't know. I'm excited to check this one out because you guys know I just watched uh, Demons, which is an Italian horror film, and really, really liked it. Really excited to check this one out. Blood Diner. Now, this was kind of a blind buy, and then I read some of the comments on Amazon, and apparently this is kind of more of a comedy horror, and the plot seems totally out there. Uh, I mean, from what I've seen, it, it looks pretty entertaining from the pictures on the back and whatnot. Just two brothers open a vegetarian restaurant, and they, they bait all these women there and end up killing them, and it's all part of some sacrifice to summon some goddess or some wild shit. Like I said, uh, most of the reviews I read said this is pretty out there, pretty wild. So on the right night, I'm going to have to check this out. It seems pretty fun. If you've seen this before, let me know what you think. Now this one here is one I've heard about for years. Another one, an exploitation film I've been kind of nervous about checking out, but I feel in a horror collection, I just had to pick this one up. And that is Last House on the Left, Wes Craven which this is actually Wes Craven's directorial debut. came out in 1972, I believe. 
And this is a very, very controversial movie. It's about two girls, two 17-year-old girls, uh, and they're trying to score some reefer. And they meet up with some guys, and they're a crazy family, and it ends up into, like, them getting tortured in the woods and all types of vicious stuff like an exploitation film has. Now, these films are iffy to me because I'm not always into that type of stuff, but every once in a while, I, I, I don't mind a little shock. It's kind of hard to shock me these days, so, you know, I'm excited to finally check this one out. But what actually is the coolest when doing the hunting for some of these movies is some of the packaging some of these films will do. Like, check this out. This is so cool. You got this artwork on the cover on the back. And there's actually some stuff inside, which got the actual Blu-ray, which apparently has three different copies of the film. This little book here, all about the movie, which who knows, this movie might make me sick and I might regret being excited for buying this. But And then it came with this poster, which... I thought it was kind of cool. I'll show you guys. First of all, you got what was on the cover of the actual Blu-ray. And now the back is what I find really cool. Look at this. Ooh. That's some brutal stuff. Hopefully this movie's good. I don't know. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. The Fly. Now they had so much stuff in FYE, I couldn't leave empty handed. I think I got a good deal for this, $6.99, but uh, I don't know, uh, ever since I seen the arm break scene and the arm, like the arm wrestling match as a kid, this movie always bugged me out to watch again, but I mean Jeff Goldblum is unbelievable in anything he does, and this is actually a pretty cool story in general. It's a remake of the original Fly, and uh, pretty much Jeff Goldblum is a scientist, and he's he's making these tele teleportation uh, machines or whatnot, and when he hops in at one point, a fly gets in the other, and they cross-contaminate or whatever. I mean, I ain't no nerd. I don't know how science works like that, but he becomes, he starts to turn into this fly-like being, and it starts with his strength and certain things, like enhancing, and then ends up, you know, becoming a downfall in it with some very, very vicious body horror and a very sad ending from what i remember but just like when i picked up aliens i know these are both kind of more science fiction but both titles are kind of something i felt i needed in the collection so jeff goldblum can't go wrong now we got one i never ever heard of body bags and this is actually a john carpenter film it's an anthology film that was released in 1993 I believe on Showtime. So I was iffy thinking of like direct direct the TV uh, release, but that is Showtime. It's a premium channel, and you know back then still. So this is pretty much an anthology horror film uh, with three different uh, little movies in it. Two of them are directed by uh, John Carpenter, and one is by Toby Hooper. It seems kind of fun from what I read, with like a lot of cameos from like uh, you know other famous. Horror actor. I think Wes Craven might be in this. I think, uh, let's see, it's Wes Craven. I don't, I don't know, a bunch of people in here. I'm not going to just read the whole back of this right now while I'm filming this, but seems pretty fun. The artwork on the cover is pretty cool. I like anthology horror films. This should be fun. Now, one that was very popular to me when I was younger Pumpkinhead. Not the goriest film. But the story and the pacing in this, and the monster itself, are awesome. It's pretty much about uh, these young kids who come into a little town, and, they, and they're riding their dirt bikes out there in, in the dirt to kind of kill time outside this little mom and pop shop. And the little kid, uh, there's a little kid there, and he ends up getting hit by the motorcycle and dying. And this was like the store owner's kid. It was just him, a single dad, I believe. And the kids take off because they don't want to get arrested. The dad is upset he lost his kids. So he hears about some like witch doctor in town that everybody's warning him about. And if you go to the witch doctor, this is kind of similar to like Pet Cemetery in a way now that I'm like talking about it. But anyways, he takes the kid to the witch doctor. And, and I mean, she doesn't bring the kid back to life, but she summons Pumpkinhead, who is like a killer hell-bent on revenge for anyone who summons him. Which is actually a pretty cool twist on a slasher movie, because I would kind of consider this a uh, slasher in a way. But rather than just like a mindless killing machine, 
This is more of like a killer who's like more like bent on the revenge of the person who summoned them. You know what I mean? Like Pumpkinhead's not just out there killing to kill. He's only killing off the will of the revenge of of uh, the, the the lead, the main guy who who uh, summoned him from the grave. And then it gets pretty crazy. It gets pretty kind of psychological towards the end. I haven't seen this one in a very long time. I'm very excited to check it out again. Once again, the album artwork and whatnot, badass. Highly suggest this one. Now, I picked up a couple things that definitely aren't horror, but I decided I'm going to show you guys right now anyways. Now, this one, man. I played a lot of Pokemon as a kid, but I wasn't too big on it in the later years as an adult. I played a little Pokemon Go, nothing too wild, but... Detective Pikachu. I don't know. I, I think it has to do with this artwork on the slipcover a little bit. I just had to pick it up. I mean, I feel this is the one time CGI is acceptable for me in a way. Because, like, you kind of expect these Pokemon to be that way from, like, the video games and everything. And it just seems kind of fun. I just decided to pick this up. And then, one of my all-time favorite movies. This isn't horror either. Surprisingly, I do not have this on Blu-ray because I just could not find... The right copy to buy. So, my first and only steelbook is none other than Antonio Montana, Scarface. You know, I didn't, didn't really want to get into the steelbook game because I knew if I got one, I'd have to start collecting them all. And that's just, uh, it's already an obsession collecting what I do. But I needed a nice copy of Scarface. This has got the Blu-ray and DVD in it. So, this is my one and only steelbook dedicated to one of my very favorite movies of all time. I don't really know what what I can say about this movie. Tony Montana, The American Dream, awesomeness. You know, I could describe it. Maybe I'll do a video down the lines. But if you don't know about Scarface, I'm not going to say no more. Check it out. Fucking awesome. And also, in some randomness, I have to show you. I had to buy this. I don't know why. But I got Scarface on Laserdisc for $5. I think what I'm going to do is actually uh, get a picture frame for this and hang it up by my movies and whatnot. But it's kind of cool if you think about it for one of your favorite movies. I now, because this was Blu-ray and DVD, Laserdisc, all I need is a new copy of VHS. And I own one of my favorite movies on every format because I'm a fucking nerd. And that's what I do. The Mark Henry of Blu-ray collecting. That's what I do. And then it was actually buy one, get one. And this is one that... On the laser discs, uh, discs, that is. And this is one that really uh, drew my eye. Another one that isn't horror, but definitely one of my favorites as well. Martin Corsese. Scorsese. Taxi Driver. Now, this artwork on the vinyl is fucking sweet. I just had to have this. Very, one of my very favorite movies. One of my favorite dramas. And look at that artwork. Like, this is getting framed, too. And, I mean, when's the last time you guys seen Laserdisc? Like... How wild is this? If nobody's ever seen Laserdisc before, it's pretty much the format they had before VHS. It's a giant CD. Plays movies. I don't think I'm ever really going to get a Laserdisc player, but like I said, this is just kind of something cool I've seen. I had to pick it up. I'm probably going to frame this in the uh, Scarface one and hang them up above my movies and whatnot or something like that. But... That's pretty much what I scored on my birthday. I mean, a couple of those items I had come in the mail or whatnot, but that's pretty much the haul I've done lately. I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed what I picked up. And if you have any suggestions at all of any movies you think I should grab for my collection that seem to be missing, or once again, any movie you'd like to see reviewed in my uh, classic horror review, or I might even start doing reviews on, uh, you know, non-horror stuff, because I like other genres of movies as well. You know, leave that in the comments for me. Whatever you want me to do next, I'm all ears. I'm working with you guys, you know. And uh, like I said, I apologize for not making the the Blu-ray hunting video. But like I was saying, I have something very special planned to film this weekend. And I should be posting that up sometime in the early week, uh, maybe Monday or Tuesday. So stay tuned for that. Uh, other than that, uh, blood, guts, and gore. Like, comment, subscribe. It's your boy Killer Pizza, and I will check you next time.